I just bought the Canon AE-1, a 35mm film camera. I've been taking photos with a digital camera since I was like 14, but now more than ever I've become increasingly interested in film photography, in analog photography. Back in 2012, Kodak filed for bankruptcy. That was seen as pretty much the end of film photography and the digital world was here and is taking over. I was part of that generation that has never touched film photography, even the cameras that my family had when I was growing up were just your typical digital point and shoot. However, film photography is a growing industry again. It is far from dying. You've got people like me that are just getting started with it and then you've got veterans and people that have been using film their entire life which prefer it to digital and are going back for more of a nostalgic feel. I do personally find that this fast paced world of instant gratification kind of takes the magic out of photography. Even just looking at photos online, I kind of get sick of it and I've been more drawn to looking at photo books. A more analog appreciation to photography is just better than the digital world sometimes. So here I am in 2022 with a new slash old Canon AE-1, which was originally released in 1976. I first started shooting film on the Canon EOS 300 about three years ago. It's very automatic, fits any of my EF Canon lenses, basically acts like a modern day DSLR, but obviously shoots 35 mil film. I've probably shot around 10 rolls of film with this EOS 300, and that's the full extent to my film photography experience. But recently I felt like I want something a bit more tactile. This doesn't mean it's practical compared to a digital camera, but there's more of a process to it. I have to manual focus, I have to manually crank back the film or the shutter. I wanna use a camera that actually requires a little bit of effort in order to get a good shot. And that's where we are right now. So that's enough waffle. Let's have a look at some footage of me shooting my first roll with the Canon AE-1. All right, so kicking things off, I am loading the roll of Fuji Color C200, which is just the stock that the person that I bought the camera off gave me with the camera. Uh, not my favorite film stock, but it's the only one I had on me. So that's what I'm loading up now, and I'll be totally honest with you. Loading up this film took me a few attempts. It wasn't as smooth as you're seeing on camera, but um, that's the power of editing. It looks like I know what I'm doing. So the first shot on the camera is of my friend Pete who was just sat opposite me. So nice and simple, actually really impressed with the indoor light and the outdoor light. It doesn't look too strange in this image, so not a bad start. In between these clips, there is about four or five shots that are just terrible that I'm probably not gonna show you, but here's one of the shots that actually worked out quite well. We were in Camden Town, that's where I bought the camera, and I noticed this little mirror reflection outside the shop, so I managed to get this photo. Here's an example of why street photography is just so random, but sometimes things work out. So there's this pink looking ice cream stand and then a girl outside with pink hair as well. So there's a nice little color match there. And obviously a fake cow because yeah. This composition here was actually spotted by Pete. So shout out Pete, but the, um, the purple building the Inverness street market sign and the lamp kind of looked cool. I'm not really happy with the photo, but I'll show you it anyway. Pretty boring day to be shooting any sort of sky related photos. On the side of the UBS building in London is this giant number five, which I should have posted this video on International Women's Day. That would have been very appropriate. But this first image, I didn't really like the composition. Although the guy looked cool, I thought I can do better. So I just waited two or three more minutes and then I got this guy walking right next to the number five. Because it's a much slower process to just use this film camera in general, I'm surprised that I even managed to focus this shot but there's a whole collection of color that came together really nicely here. The red traffic light and the red coat really work well together, along with all the signs and the cones and whatnot. So 
Surprised I managed to get this shot, but probably my favourite from the day in London. Of course, this wouldn't be a photography channel if there wasn't someone making coffee. So I did make this coffee because I intended on drinking it, but I did also want to get a nice product shot of the coffee as well. So that's what we did. And because I'm an absolute novice, I didn't even get the focus right. So this kind of doesn't work. But what does work is the colors between the London coffee book and the colors of the coffee. That looks nice. But maybe if I just learn how to actually focus a camera, um, I'll get a better shot next time. Next on the list of photo locations was South End on Sea. I went for a little day out, fish and chips, ice cream, that kind of thing. So uh, also I took the camera as well, obviously. I didn't get any amazing shots. Um, I started out by taking a photo of some seagulls because we're by the sea. Um, this shot of them all lined up nicely. It was kind of cool. So this is probably my favorite photo from the entire roll. I noticed this fairground ride. I noticed how cool the clouds look. Just look at that blue sky. This was just a composition waiting to happen. So I waited 10 minutes for this thing to get going. And yeah, I managed to take a really clean image. And to finish off the last few photos on the film roll, it was sunset, so I headed down to a local river where there was a couple of boats, a couple of swans, that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, here's what I got. So by no means am I experienced enough to talk about different film stocks and give you comparisons and share my opinion because my opinion doesn't really mean anything at this point. But I have shot a couple of rolls previously on Portra 400. That seems like a lot better than the Fuji C200, which I've shot in this video. But the guy gave me the Fuji stock with the camera, so I won't complain. I would also like to try Cine still. Now that is the typical film vibe. Some of the atmospheres and mood you can get with that kind of stock from what I've seen really look good. So, so that's kind of what I'm gonna be doing over the next few weeks and few months, shooting some Portrait 400, trying out some Cine still, and of course I'll be sharing it all on YouTube too. If you love the process of photography and you're a digital user that's never tried film, I urge you to give it a go. If you actually like the process of photography and are not too concerned about the result being outstanding, then yeah, give film a try. If you wanna actually put effort into creating an image instead of just pressing a plastic shutter button, then yeah, film photography is all about the process from, from my experience. The idea of going out and taking a photo and not being able to see the photo for a couple of days while it gets developed is amazing, actually. Some people might think that that's impractical and it's annoying, but everything nowadays is instant. The fact that we don't get to see the photo instantly makes you appreciate where you are taking the photo instead of just instantly putting on Instagram and waiting to see how many likes you get. That kind of ruins photography for me. One of my goals this year is to shoot more film. So if you would like to follow my new film photography Instagram account, little plug there, just Mike Chibley Film. Obviously I'm still using my regular Instagram account for everything, but every now and then I'm gonna post some film shots that I'm happy with. So if you're into that kind of thing, then please do give me a follow. If you wanna see a full street photography on film, day in the lifestyle video, then a link will pop up. Check that out if you're interested. Thank you.